Hello again, I'm Doug Smith, and welcome to the 2019 January 18th edition of Portsmouth This Week. Uh, our guest today is Ashley Medeiros. Welcome to the show, Ashley. Thank you. Ashley is a business consultant with Connect Greater Newport, which is an initiative of the Newport Chamber of Commerce. We'll talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. Before we get into the organization, Ashley, I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about your own background. Yeah, absolutely. I came on board with Connect Greater Newport last May, so it's been about, I guess, eight months now. Prior to that, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, and I've actually been here in the area for almost 10 years to the day. I moved uh, for an opportunity at Boys Town, which is here in Portsmouth. Yeah. And so I worked with them, working in their programs for a long time, and then did some fundraising. And I had the opportunity to work with the business community, and it just seemed like a great fit. Yeah, good. Uh go to school somewhere? Or? I did. I um, have my undergraduate degree from John Carroll University, which is actually in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I have a master's degree um, from an, a smaller <coughs> college in Erie, Pennsylvania. And then I took some continuing education classes here at Salve when I was... Salve. Salve yeah. is a good place to it go. It is. Yeah. The uh, master's degree is in what? So actually, um, my master's degree is in administration of criminal justice, of all okay. things. Uh, and so... Well, Not it's still a master's degree. That's great. It is, it is. And when, when I received the degree, I thought I would love the criminal justice things that I had gotten my undergraduate in, but, I, but not so much. I really liked the business classes, and I liked working with and learning with, about business, and so that's kind of where it has driven my career. Yeah. Now, we were talking a few minutes ago, uh, when you worked for uh, Boys Town, you were actually on the program, right? Did you say? I, I worked um, here I mean, on, the, you, I was on here, this program. Yes, yes, I was actually here on the campus working in Portsmouth yeah. for, for many years. I oversaw the group homes there, which are the family home program, and then I went into the fundraising role. Yeah. Well, I'm, I apologize for not recognizing you. It was probably s several years ago, I guess. <laughs> it was, uh, yes. Yeah. Probably about seven now. Uh, and you got a two-and-a-half-year-old daughter? I do. Daughters I do. are, you know, very cute. Yes. Uh, that's great. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about, about Connect Greater Newport. Mm -hmm. um, how and when and probably why was this organization started? Yeah, so um, many years ago, I, I guess over five now, a few years ago I should say, the Chamber did a strategic plan, but it was really came about as a needs <coughs> assessment of how can the Chamber better support the business community. Okay, this is the Newport Chamber the of Newport Commerce. The Newport Chamber, County Chamber of, Chamber of Commerce. And that's in Connect Greater Newport came out of that. Now it took some years to really get it moving and underway and so uh, the executive director of the chamber, Aaron Donovan Boyle, brought together all the leaders in our communities and so Portsmouth, Middletown and Newport joined on very quickly as well as Jamestown, Tiverton um, and then that slowly started to expand into Bristol and Warren and the idea is that we are a very small area, and so in order to really strengthen our economy and support our businesses and our business growth and retention in the area, we have to work together, and we can't just do it independently. And, and there really wasn't anybody really focusing on business retention, expansion, and attraction in the area, and so the Chamber took that on. Um, Connect Greater Newport was developed as a public-private partnership of the Chamber, and so that's why it has a different name, and it's, it's set apart, because although the Chamber really focuses on, on the business community, they really focus on, on their members and, and helping those businesses thrive. Because of how um, this is the partnership, I support any business that's here in, in those, those areas and in the region. Okay, and uh, now do the other, I know there are several communities in this greater Newport mm -hmm. County uh, organization. Uh, let's take an example, Bristol. Do they have their own chamber of commerce, or how does that work? Uh, Bristol, uh, Bristol County has the East Bay Chamber. East Bay. Chamber. Yes, okay. yes, and so we've met with them, and we all want to work together in partnership. We don't want to be duplicating services, but it's ha how, what's best for the business community, and how can we each add a piece to to what needs to be done to really strengthen our economy. Okay, and so basically, you guys are there for all businesses, including small ones, startups, etc. Yes. Yes. Uh, to do that kind of stuff. Uh, what, what exactly is your mission, or how do you describe what you do? Uh, our mission is to support our existing business community, that's, that's number one, but then also to attract new opportunities to the region. And um, there's an overall larger mission, too, and, and that's just to strengthen our local economy and make sure that, it, that we're stable for years to come. Now, uh, you guys are kind of a part of the Newport mm -hmm. County Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
do you meet with these guys all the time? Do you operate out of their buildings? Or? So yes, I, um, my hub is the Newport Chamber building, um, which we will be moving to the Sheffield School um, Innovate Newport in the next few weeks. Which yeah, we're I really just saw that in, in the Daily News. Yeah, we're really excited about that. But I'm kind of on the road, and so I can be anywhere that I need to be from in our whole entire area. So I always say I work from Jamestown to Tiverton to Warren, which isn't very big, but for us, it is. Yeah, sure it is, sure it is. <laughs> and, and so... There are, there are bridges involved. Come there on. are, there are. That's what, I, <laughs> that's what I keep saying, you know, we're crossing bridges and, and breaking down barriers, and it, yeah. but it's good. Well, it's good. Uh, what specific kind of help and resources do you provide? Somebody comes to you, some mm -hmm. business, or some g guy coming in from out, out of state and looks at the Newport area and says, geez, that'd be a nice place to set up a business. Uh, what, what do you do? What, how do you help them? Yeah, and so there's two things that, that I do. First is proactive outreach, because some businesses just don't even realize that there are services out there and that we can help them. And so I call businesses and just say, hey, we're here. Can I sit down? Can I talk to you? Can I hear what's going well, what you need support sure. with? And um, then there are people who will proactively call. And I sit down and I hear about where they want to go, what they want to do. And then I'm able to then be that connector there are a lot of services out there. There's actually, um, the Rhode Island Foundation did a report and they found over a hundred different services that could support a business in Rhode Island. Yeah. That's a lot of services. And when you talk to business owners, they're busy. We are made up of 98% of small businesses. And so that means sometimes you have one to five people who are doing it all. Yeah. And so to be able to sort through all of those resources to see what is going to, going to best support them is really time consuming and hard. And so I can come in and hear that and really direct them exactly to what would be best for them so that they're not having to do all the groundwork themselves. Now that includes the Rhode Island Commerce Corp Corporation, I guess, out of the state? Yes. The Secretary yes. of State's office? Um, our steering committee um, that we have, so it, we're not an independent 501c3, we are under are under the chamber as an initiative, and so we do have a steering committee, and that's comprised of um, each a member of each one of the municipalities, as well as our funders in Bank Newport and Van Buren. We also have Commerce RI representatives sitting on that committee with us, as well as the universities in the area, the Navy, and, and some um, other business community members um, and so we all work very collaboratively we meet often and, and so they tell me okay these are the incentives that are out there and this is what we're working on and here are some resources for example they have the um, workforce credit and so businesses can apply to have reimbursements for training at programs and so being able to get that out there and so businesses know that that they can maybe recoup some of their funding for their training of employees yeah, I think it would help too to have somebody like you and your organization to tell you how to do it right because right. Paperwork, you know, government paperwork is unbelievable. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, so that, that's great. Uh, are, how are you funded? So we are funded, um, the municipalities have each contributed to the initiative, um, as well as Bank Newport is one of our funders, and then Van Buren has also funded us. Right now we are seeking private funding, so it is that public-private partnership. And so it's really, um, with the business community, it's investing in in this initiative because by investing in this community and helping business growth and retention and expansion you're only helping yourself and so we're really hoping that we get some more investors who can see the potential in what we're doing okay now are, are, so are we talking like grants that pe people are, it, like you say the uh, yes so yes a couple of the funding outfits yeah right so it could be a private business sponsorship type model um, it could also be some grants um, we are under the the Newport County Chambers 501c3 and so we are able to solicit money through that um, and so so either okay, that's, a, that's a nonprofit uh, it is so yeah. they have a small nonprofit fund that, that a lot of other organizations have have been started through and, and have yeah. been supported through so I guess the question is that that initial funding you got, you got stuff from the towns and everybody else to stand up on this thing. Uh, what about going forward? I mean, do you have some plans or something for continual funding? And we have a five-year strategy, and so right now we are working on funding the five-year strategy. And so right now, um, because we've had the commitment from the towns, we've had commitment from Bank Newport and Van Buren, we're now soliciting additional funds um, at this time to be able to complete the strategy, and and we felt. Through that completion, that's when we we've made some um, we've been able to really move the needle forward to help um, what we're out to to help and help the communities yeah. and help the businesses. 
Well, you know, because every town in the island, for sure, is stretched in terms of budget and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Um, how much do you get from, say, Portsmouth? Just on a um. <laughs> you don't know, huh? Exactly. <laughs> I, I guess um, it, we get, I think Portsmouth contribution was about $5,000 a year. Okay. And is that in addition to Portsmouth's con contribution to the chamber? I know they also pay the chamber. I, I believe they are members of the chamber, and so that's, yeah. that would be separate as a membership. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, because I guess the hard part of all these things is trying to figure out how you're going to keep going. It's right. Initially, you get a lot of enthusiasm, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. But then the key is uh, being there after two years or so and mm -hmm. things start to fade. That's why we looked at this more um, as a strategy and a five-year plan so that we could solicit funding that would help move that to yeah. that five years and not just say having to go back year after year after year for funding. Now, how many people are involved in your organization? It's, it's not just you, right? It is not. And so how it was developed, so we do have the steering committee, which really drives what we're doing and, and makes the decisions. and and puts their input in. Um, Aaron, when th with the chamber, when they when they move when they decided to take this on, I guess is the, is the best thing. They put out an RFP and hired a company called Fourth Economy Consultants, and they're con an economic development consulting firm. And so they really add that back end of of what's going on, and because um, they understand this economic development, they've done projects that are very similar. They've worked with other organizations who have, have done similar projects yeah, in, in their communities and so they have a good track record um, both locally and, and throughout the country and, and so they're really um, kind of pushing it forward and so I'm here on the ground um, and so really the one person so you're like in the, the ground. Okay, you're, so you're the, you're the one on the ground that does the actual reaching yeah. out, talking to, etc. I do, yes. Uh, now you mentioned, you mentioned you have a steering committee, that's the big one with Mm -hmm. All the towns and yes, everybody else yes. involved. Um, is that how you're governed? Do you have a board of directors, for example? No, because we're not our own 501c3. And so that I think is very important too um, is that we are a part of the chamber. We're an initiative of the chamber and we fall under that umbrella. And But the public private partnership is where the municipalities come in as well as, as the, ind the independent business owners who really want to see this, our economy grow here. And so um, that's why it's just a steering committee. So it functions very much like a board. We meet monthly. Um, we have continual communication as it pertains to each community okay. um, or the business community as a whole. And, and so they very much are driving what we're doing and signing off on it and, and making sure that, they're, that each community's needs are met. Um, but it's not actually a, a board. Yeah. Okay. And you say you meet fairly frequently, this, this steering committee? We do. We meet the first Wednesday of every month. Okay. Um, but throughout the month, um, I make sure that I'm contributing to each community um, yeah. as they would like. And you so have to I show that you're, <laughs> you're actually doing right, something. Right. Sure. Um, and so my goal is to go out and meet with as many businesses as I possibly can um, to talk to them. And with, it's called Business Retention Expansion Attraction is the initiative. So BRI or BRIA. And so it, it's it's very common in economic development to have a, a BRIA or BRIA yeah. program. Um, and so that is my number one. But then there's a lot of other things that we try to add capacity to in our, in our um, communities. And so um, whether that's going to the economic development commission meetings at each one of the, the municipalities or working um, on in specific projects yeah. um, or um, working to just so, for example, we work with Middletown um, to do their corporate park meetings. That was one thing that they wanted some help with, and so we were able to add capacity there. Here, I always try to attend your tank farm meetings, which are just now changed to the West Tide plan meetings, and so being able to help and support in, in that capacity as yeah. well. Now, so I would assume your main point of contact in the towns would be like the business development person, like ours yes. is Rich Tolipsky, for yes. example. Yes, yes, so Rich is my... Uh, do you have any opportunities to actually talk to the town councils or yes or? yes and so actually rich and i were just talking about when that would be the most appropriate because we do we want to make sure that we're keeping them up to date and and being able to explain to them what we're doing um what the feedback is from the business community and i think that's the one thing yeah. when we do this this Berea, it's it's an interview process so i sit down with business owners and and leaders and i say what's going well and what are your challenges and so we developed a report after our first 70 businesses that that we wanted to meet with and the report really laid out um, 
why businesses are here, where they see themselves going, um, which is very important, um, but what are the setbacks and how can we help to overcome some of the barriers that are limiting our entire community? And so those were all presented and, and given to our, our committee to be able to distribute to town councils and committees so that they understand what, yeah. what we're hearing and what we're learning. Now, do you also have any like subgroups, like for example, let's say looking at technology or computer stuff or whatever? Yes. So, out of the first seventy interviews, we found a few areas that have really come to light as needing to be addressed. And these areas, they surpass. I was, I guess, I should take a step back. I was very surprised. I expected certain industries to have certain challenges and right. others to be different, and that's not what I found. I found the challenges to be pretty consistent across the board. Um, the biggest challenge I heard was 77% of businesses saying that workforce was their biggest limitation to their retention here, in, in meaning for them to stay here, or their growth. Um, and so we wanted, that was the one, the first thing we said, mm -hmm. we need to help the workforce. We need to help our businesses to find a workforce. And the limitations in workforce are can be breaking, broken down into three areas that I hear the most. The first is it's a very expensive area to live. Yeah. Um, quality of life is the reason most of our businesses are here and the reason we're all here, but it makes it very expensive and so it's hard to, f to find a workforce because it's hard to live here. Um, it's also very hard to get here <laughs> and so you can't live here, we can't get here, um, especially if you don't have a car and so public transportation is, is not the easiest. And then the third is in some industries the educational divide. Newport and Bristol counties are some of the most educated in all of New England and I, I believe all of the country. You're some of the general population. The general yeah. population is, is extremely educated. But in some of our industries, we might not need that level of education. Um, in other industries, it might be more of a specialized um, education. And so those are the three barriers that we find the most. Um, we also ha find some other barriers, including um, some struggles with zoning and regulations and and sure, that's, that's got to be an issue. We hear that a lot, um, as well as the cost of doing business. It's, it's expensive to do business. Um, but then the, the fourth thing that we really hear, and another one we are looking at, is that technology piece. Um, it's access yeah. to high-speed, reliable internet. Broadband or Broad, something. Yes, right. it's, it's, it's the, you know, the term broadband is used, and we don't have the best um, options yeah. for, for broadband. And so as a committee, we've decided to really look at two areas um, and to to put some extra attention and we're focusing on workforce housing or middle housing I like to call it and I further like to say housing for me yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. um, in, in some of our areas unfortunately our teachers and our firemen can't afford to live in some of these communities you know who are working here and so helping them to, to live local and then the second thing is that broadband and actually right now we have a survey out and we're asking business owners to help us to really understand the problem. We have, you know, a small population, but we need to cast that broader net. And it's a quick, less than five minute survey. You can either take the housing section or the broadband or both, depending on what's what's needed for your business and letting us know how we can, how it's, it's affecting your business and what we can do to help. Now, they can access this on your website, yes. which is a really good one, I thought. Well, thank you. It's got a lot of information and a lot of, uh, discusses a lot of the projects, too. Mm -hmm. For example, the one in Portsmouth, I guess, right now, is trying to figure out what to do with the old Cogs Hall School down yes. the road here. Yes, And, uh, uh, you know, so people can go there and get a good look at what you're doing. One of the things I did, in fact, uh, this is what I want to ask you. I signed up on your website for the email yes. list. Now, what can I expect to see? So we do, right now we're doing um, monthly, or e-blasts every other month, and it's just kind of what's going on. And so it's yeah. any leading RFP, so the last one that went out right at the beginning of the year, what we did, we had the Cogs Shell School RFP out there, right. um, and a few others that, that are happening. We also try to update with some, some news, business news. Um, or any type of business resource. And, and so that's what we try to put on there. We highlight a couple properties that that might be for sale or redevelopment and opportunities for, yeah. for people to be able to move their business here. Yeah, I think it also kind of tells people what you're doing, the mm -hmm. kind of areas you're into. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a Portsmouth Business Association here in town, and they're, they're very active in supporting our local, for example, the historical society in town. You know, So it's, it's very nice. We have this group of businesses, but I guess my question is, uh, are, are those the people in that, and they have a couple hundred members, I guess, in mm -hmm. Portsmouth, uh, are those folks the kind of people that yes. you'd want 
to connect with? Absolutely. Any business owner or leader I would love to talk to. And even if they don't feel that they need any support or resource or guidance, just hearing from them and hearing their feedback is extremely valuable yeah. to help us decide going forward what are the next. So we're, we say we focus on broadband and we, we make develop some strategies for solutions and we come up with strategies to help um, increase some workforce housing. So what is the next step? What else should we start looking at? How can we look at the bigger picture? Yeah, the uh, I know the PBA, our local PBA, uh, probably once a month or so, has something they call an after hours, which is essentially they just, they go somewhere, they have some food and drink, and they network and discuss yeah. stuff. And uh, that might be an interesting place for you to get connected with sometime. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, you could walk around talking to individual business owners and, you know, and see what they think. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, you know, in addition to, to uh, businesses, Again, businesses are your focus, I know. Are there any opportunities for just uh, regular civilians to get involved in helping you somehow? Or? Um, I'm not at this time. That doesn't mean um, going forward. Now, there is one thing that we are working on, and that is the broadband internet. Yeah. And so we are developing a We've been committee. talking about that for oh, years. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I have gone down the, <laughs> the trail of, yeah. <laughs> of what, have been, what has been done with broadband. Uh, and and you know there's 5G coming and there's a lot of new technologies and and so we are forming a committee that yeah. and we are looking for people and and they could just be c civilians here or but who have an understanding of the tech world um, and and how that really works and, and ideas on how to further that because it is limiting well and especially today almost any business is hardwired they, they really need technology yes. to do their jobs and uh, so that's vitally important one of the things, though, you know, we found out, for example, uh, uh, one of the one of the problems with bringing, say, fiber optics or something on the island is that the market's not big enough for these companies to be able to do that. Um, however, there are some other, you know, high capacity things coming into the island. Yeah. I guess it's a question of how we leverage those. It'd be great to do something else besides just talking about them, which we've been doing. Yes. Uh, so there's actually um, a, a bit of a misconception. We actually do have fiber optics here on the island. Um, we do. We do. We do. We have, you know, running right down, right outside. Okay. <laughs> so so you do have, you are able to get yeah. fiber optic high-speed internet. Um, it's the cost in the connectivity and so it's yeah. the terminology is the last mile and that's the connection from that fiber that we have yeah. in, in the roads to the business and it's expensive and so those, that's one of the things that we're looking at is there any type of federal funding out there is there any type of state funding like how can we um, help support that last mile connection in the area and that's one of the things that we'll look into yeah that's it, it's interesting because it also affects government local government and it does we're also very tied to to and need this this uh, kind of technology just to keep people safe. Uh, let, me, let me back up one minute because I, I, I found it interesting when I initially saw, okay, connect Newport, or, or connect, uh, yeah, where are we? Greater Newport. I said, Greater Newport, what the heck is that? Yeah. And then I looked and I saw the list of the towns and there are a lot of them and there are a lot of them, they're not even in Newport County. Bristol is one mm -hmm. uh, in Warren, et cetera. Uh, how many communities are, are in this and you, under your umbrella, let's put it that way. We, um, so it's both Newport and Bristol counties, which is the same region as Discover Newport as well. Um, seven of the nine have signed on to the project. And so that's Jamestown, Newport, Middletown, Portsmouth, Tiverton, uh, Bristol, and Warren. Okay. Uh, who are the holdouts here? Uh, so there's Little Compton and Barrington. <laughs> Compton and Barrington, okay. Uh, and each one has signed on, I think, yeah. for their own reasons. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's what we, we try to be mindful of, is making sure that although we're all working together, that each community is, is having their needs met. Now, do you, do you ever have like meetings with everybody, reps from all these towns? And so each one of them sits on our steering committee. Oh, they're on so, the steering so committee. Monthly. Okay, yes, so yes. you get a, a local input from everywhere, mm -hmm. which is probably yeah. a great thing to do. It is, it is. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I. I the reason I ask you about your governance and the steering committee and how that works, uh, let me back it up a little bit because what about the chamber? Does the chamber have a, have a board of directors? They do, yes. Okay. So the chamber does have their own board of directors. Uh, some of the members of their board actually sit on our st steering committee as, okay. as their piece, so yes. Okay, and 
are those generally are those citizens from you know outside uh, most of the chamber board um, and there are actually their annual meetings coming up here next week on the 30th and they um, they elect their new board members sure. coming in every so many years right. and and so it's it's mostly members of the business community and business leaders yeah well that makes sense because they're the ones that have an interest in, right. in all this stuff uh, uh, besides the Cogsall School, do you have any other current projects do you know of in, in Portsmouth that are going on? Not, not so much. That's the one that I know Rich is, is really focusing That's on. That's a big one. Yeah. It's a big one, and there's, it's such a great opportunity for a partnership with Portsmouth. Um, and so that's really what's, what's the highest on their radar right now. Yeah. Uh, w one of the things we run into here, and it's the same in every town, is you know, after a couple of years of funding organizations like the chamber even mm -hmm. uh, the people in the town start to wonder you know what are they doing for us mm -hmm. and I think uh, it, any advice I could give you would be the main thing is to keep current with the council mm -hmm. and making sure people see what you're doing mm -hmm. because people get tired of throwing I know it's only a five thousand bucks four thousand whatever it is mm -hmm. but that that becomes an issue if they don't see any movement here mm -hmm. And we do have other organizations, as I mentioned, AIPC, the mm -hmm. Clinic Island Planning Commission, or whatever they're, they're mm -hmm. changing yeah. to, or uh, the Tank Farm Outfit. Mm -hmm. this, uh, all of these seem to be doing similar things, and it's kind of hard to keep track of. Yeah, so, um, so the Tank Farms, for example, that is a town commission, and so those are, you yeah. know, put into place by, by the, the local municipality right. here. The Aquinnick Island Planning is a joint venture with all three municipalities um, as well as the chamber it um, started under the chamber and I sit on their board as a non-voting member um, so I work very closely okay. with with those running the Aquinnick Island planning because they can really add capacity in a lot of ways um, with economic de development you really need to look at smart growth and planning and so really working with them collaboratively is, is very important um, and so I think where we're different is we're really focusing on supporting our business community and I think where we can add the most value for Portsmouth or, or any community is making sure that that business is able to stay and grow um, because the worst thing is is when we lose that business yeah. we lose that revenue as a town and we want to make sure we lose those jobs and so we want to stay ahead of that and be able to prevent that from happening or we can help add those jobs to yeah. the community and so I think those are the, the things that are so important yeah I, I, I would agree uh, you know we're almost out of time here but I think you, you mentioned that AIPC is a planning organization you guys are where the rubber meets the road more or less mm -hmm. on this stuff uh, I think all of these probably have a role for example in something like broadband or yes. you know Yes. Uh, we have to use every pulpit we can find to talk about this stuff to get it moving. Yeah, we're actually working on um, uh, their uh, Quidnick Island planning. Like I said, we work very, very closely together. John and Allison there who yeah. run are just, are just great and, and really understand how we can, we can do this together. So we're working on broadband together as well as um, we're hosting a housing symposium. Um, at CCRI on March 15th, which okay. is going to talk about the different needs for, for housing, whether that's um, affordable housing, middle housing, and workforce housing, as well as the aging population okay. and the need for some We're out of time here, Ashley, but I'd like to thank you for coming in, mm -hmm. and I appreciate the work you're doing. Uh, it's, all, it's all for the good of the community, so mm -hmm. thanks very much. Sure. And I'll see you next time on Portsmouth This Week.